Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Nahmidu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiru wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu. Nashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa nashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd. To you my Imam Yusuf the Malik and my wonderful brothers and sisters I'm thankful for Allah the Almighty to have the great honor and privilege to address you this afternoon inshallah Masjid Aqsar in this part of Philadelphia our brothers and sisters I just wanted to um, speak to you a few moments um, my wife has been trying to teach me the Sunnah my wife has been trying lately to teach me um, the sunnah of being a little bit brief and I'm gonna I'm gonna shock you you know uh, the brothers I was I just came back from the San Francisco area uh, just this morning and um, they're pretty smart I think they found the way of having me give short talks. I had to give a, um, had to catch a flight last night about a half an hour after I began my talk. So I thought those brothers were very smart to make sure that I would definitely finish within a half an hour. Well, I don't have a flight to catch today to go back to um, New York City, but my wife has been telling me, says, Imam, you, you speak too long. And uh, she calls me Imam. And I said, alhamdulillah, I'm going to try um, to shorten my talks. But this topic um, this afternoon is one that uh, affects all of us. Mending fin fences and building bridges. But I want you to do something, brothers and sisters. Right now, I want you to think about a relationship that you have that's not the best as it should be. My prayer is that as a result of this talk, that you do something when the talk is over, inshallah. Allah the Almighty has given us the formula for building bridges and mending fences. What is the relationship now between you and your wife? Many of us, in fact, unfortunately, most of us who have relationships, who have marriages, we have found that these marriages don't last. It's not unusual to see a Muslim brother and sister and ask the question after two months, are they still married? If you're having difficulty right now in your marriage, I want you to take something, inshallah, that we're going to give this afternoon and take it home and to work on the relationship between your husband and your wife. If you now have and know a bad relationship that you have with another Muslim brother or sister, as we do, if you sit in my office and sit in the office of Sheikh Yusuf or any brother or sister who's working in the cause of Islam, how often, Imam, do you find people every day coming in your office with some bad relationship between one brother and another brother or another sister and another sister or between a brother and a sister? We want to begin to mend those fences. How many of you know different relationships between masjids and masjids? Some Muslims in one masjid have problems with Muslims in other masjids. In fact, if you look around the world, you find Muslims in conflict with each other. And I think because we don't use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. So today I'm not going to give you anything heavy. I'm just going to bring a few ayats from the Qur'an and a few of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inshallah to show that the formula for building bridges is the same whether you're dealing with relationship, interpersonal relationships, nation to nation, or even between husband and wife. And brothers and sisters, I know that this Islam works. I know it works. And I know it works for two reasons. Number one, I have faith in the Qur'an. 
Every word of the Quran is the word of Allah the Almighty. And every hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu is guidance from Allah. And if we follow it and implement it, inshallah, we're going to have a better relationship. It is my opinion, brothers, respected brothers, mujahid, that most of us don't follow and use what we were given from Quran and Sunnah. Most of us, in my humble opinion, I'm sorry, I know you're going to get angry at me, you're going to throw tomatoes at me. But most of us, we merely quote the Quran and the Hadith. And it's just like rhetoric. And I want to prove that to you today, inshallah. Number one, I know it works because number one, Allah said it and His Messenger said it. Number two, experience has taught us that. I'm going to concentrate this afternoon for these few moments in ayat from the Quran. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مَنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَاتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرْقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءٍ فَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَعْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَ This is going to be the verse that I'm going to focus on, inshallah. Hold on all together by the rope of Allah and be not divided. وَاذْكُرُوا and remember, Ni'matullahi alaykum, Allah's blessing on you. You were enemies, a'da'in. You were definitely enemies. And by Allah's grace, He tied your hearts together so that you became brothers. You became brothers. I don't know about you. Everybody that I see here in this masjid today, I love. I love you, believe it or not. But if it had not been for Islam, had not been for Islam, probably 99% of you I would not have known, nor would I have befriended. Abdul Rashid, I, I want to say this young brother here, Alhamdulillah, Abdul Rashid, uh, this past Friday he gave khutbah at Masjid al Taqwa. We have about 10 strong brothers that are coming behind us who are studying very um, hard, studying the Sharia, studying Al-Quran, and studying the Sunnah. And for the first time in his life, Brother Abdul Rashid, he gave khutbah at the masjid at Taqwa. I was right there, by the way. I wasn't traveling, I wasn't gone, I wasn't out of the city. The reason that I say that, Sheikh Yusuf, is that we're getting older. Well, maybe not so much you. But the rest of us, we're getting older, and we have to make sure that those who are coming behind us, inshallah, can continue this deen. So we're developing young brothers. Alhamdulillah, um, some of the brothers who are with me today, uh, all of them, uh, Brother Naeem Abdullah, and, and Brother Jihad Abdul Aziz, and, and Brother Yusuf, all of these brothers are training. One other brother usually come with us, Brother Abdul Nasir, alhamdulillah, He's been given khutbah in the prisons. And about four weeks ago, he was in Riker Al Rikers Island, and uh, he gave a khutbah, and 16 people took shahada. And alhamdulillah, these are the brothers that are coming behind us, and I think that every imam have to take their responsibility and train those coming behind them. We received a lesson recently, and I've been saying for years that our great brothers like Sheikh Ahmed Didat who's going all around the world and taught this message that this brother and others, Sheikh Jamal Badawi and others have to train people coming after them because we're not going to be here forever. And as you know, I want you to make a dua for our Sheikh Ahmed Didat who had a stroke, I'm sure most of you know by now. And he had a very devastating stroke that has left him completely paralyzed. And um, this is a brother that we love very much. If you really love him at this moment, the thing that he needs from us is our dua. And if you're going to make relationships better between Muslims, build bridges, then one of the things that we have to do at least is to make dua for our brother. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever listens to this tape, to be sincere and make dua for our brother Ahmed Didat, inshallah. 
this ayah from the Quran is true. You were enemies. And Allah, by His mercy and His ni'mah, His blessings, He brought you together. I know it worked because a long time ago there was a, a young man named Jeffrey and a young man named Chris. And they lived in the Fort Greene projects. And believe it or not, at a very young age, I'm talking five and six years old, both these young men were in a gang fight and they used to fight against each other. Wallahi, at five and six years old, they were in a gang fight. They lived in the Fort Greene projects in Brooklyn. And at that tender age, they used to fight against each other. Jeffrey and Chris, you all know them. Jeffrey grew up and Chris grew up. Jeffrey grew up to become Imam of Masjid al-Taqwa, Siraj Wahaj. And Chris grew up to become the Naib of Masjid al-Taqwa, Abdul Shakir. So somehow years later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought these two brothers together and they became the best of friends. You were enemies and Allah brought your hearts together. And this is the verse that I'm going to use, inshallah, to prove that we can get our um, relationships together. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to challenge you. Jazakallah khair, brother. You can leave it there, inshallah. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to step on your feet. I'm going to say things, inshallah, that you may not even like. But inshallah, I pray to Allah that I can be a servant tonight while I speak hopefully from his guidance for the next few moments, inshallah. I've studied our relationships and I, it disheartens me to see Muslims especially fight against each other. This is to me is the worst thing. I've sat down trying to reconcile relationships between husband and wife and between brothers and sisters. And there's nothing on this earth that's worse than see Muslims uh, fight. I'm going to take a very simple ayat, a very simple hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that we all heard, and a very simple hadith, and to show you how very profound it is, because I've learned never to take for granted anything that Allah's Messenger says. Listen to this hadith, and we've heard it many times, but I bet you we didn't get the depth of it. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَدْخُلُوا جَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا Easy enough. No one shall enter paradise until you believe. Don't be confused about it. No disbelievers will be in paradise. You never go to paradise until you believe. And think about it. None of you will believe until you love each other. Now, now that should scare you. Every Muslim, man and woman, wants to go to Jannah. Everybody. Everybody. First key, you have to believe. You shall never go to Jannah until you believe. And you don't really believe until you love each other. But the sentence that comes after it, this is, the, this is the key, subhanAllah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shall I show you something that make you love each other? Now, that should say, wow, you, wow I, I, I want to learn how to love my brother. Because... Brother Akil, did you ever hear me tell you I love you? No, I'm telling you now and I love you, brother. Really, Akhi, wallahi, I love you not even a little bit. Even I think about you at times. And, and, and we're not funny, by the way, as Muslims. No, I, I tell you this, Akhi, I'm going to show you something. Mujahid, come here for a second. Now, come on this side, Mujahid. You up in Harlem? Can you imagine two men walking down the street in Harlem holding hands? <laughs> or in the village? <laughs> what would you say? But guess what? Abdul Sabah would tell you in Saudi, 
You see this all the time. They made me swing their hands walking down the street. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know why? Because um, I'm pushing you, I'm pushing you away now. Because, so, is it that quick? Because you know why we love each other. And, 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 and Islam, alhamdulillah, has changed the lives of African Americans who become Muslims. Because we used to have this macho image. But Islam has softened up our hearts. And you know, um, and I saw Imam Yusuf when I came in. And I walked over there, I saw him. And you know, subhanAllah, he gave me such a hug. And even from his voice, even from his voice, I felt the love. Wallahi. Even from the voice alone, I heard that, that love. Shall I show you something that will help to increase the love between you? Because we want to become believers and we want to go to Jannah. Afshu salam abaynakum, the Prophet said. Spread salams among you. Now, I'm going to make, I have a confession. Now listen, I want you to keep this between us now, right? I don't want this to go out this room, out this masjid. This between us. Confession. Don't worry about the tape. They, maybe they'll get it blanked out. When I first read that, you know, as much as I love the messenger of Allah and I believe every word he said, I said, come on. Just giving salams is going to make us love each other? Wallahi azim, I swear by Allah, when I started, like any other hadith of the Prophet والسلام, to think about it and ask Allah's guidance on it, it uncovered and unfolded the tremendous depth of wisdom in that statement. Afshu salam abaynakum. Spreading salams will help you love each other. Wallahi, it works. And I'm going to prove it to you. And by the way, you want to know the evidence? You want to know the dalil for the proof of this? Yes, the prophet is a proof within himself. If the prophet said it, it's true. The prophet never spoke out of his own heart. Is nothing more than revelation revealed. So every word of the messenger of Allah, every word of it, his wisdom and his guidance by Allah, Consider this, this ayat from Quran. Huh. SubhanAllah. Whenever you are greeted with a greeting, then return it. Faruduha. No. Fa'asun fa'asana minha. Fahayu bi asana minha. Give one better than it. Or at least return it. It's a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How dare you? How dare you, brother? Some Muslim come up to you and say, brother, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. You ever seen that? I've seen it. Sometimes you, some, what's the matter with the brother? I gave him salams and he gave me such a bad response. Salam alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam. Sometimes you're not even sure if the brother gave the greeting back to you. You know why? Because you didn't obey that ayat from the Quran. Give one better than it. Subhanallah. 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 Today, in the next few moments, what I want to talk about and mending fences and building bridges is the power of how to respond and to react to people. Because that's the key. In Islam, always you get a bigger reward for doing a fard than a sunnah. True or not? For instance, Salatul Fajr, you get reward from Allah. The Sunnah of Salatul Fajr, you get a reward, but not as big as Fard. True? Sahih? Am I telling the truth? 
Hajj, Fard, mandatory. Umrah, you do Umrah, it's not like the reward of Hajj. The mandatory, you have to do. And the Sunnah is extra. If you do it, you get extra blessings from Allah. But the Fard is mandatory. You have to do it. And in Islam, always you get more reward for doing the Fard than you do doing the Sunnah. Except one exception. According to Al-Quran, to return the salams is mandatory. You have to do it. According to the ayat of the Quran, you have to give one better. فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا That's the general rule. Give one better. Or at least فَرُدُّهَا At least return it. Now the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told the Sahaba that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a bigger reward for the Muslim who greets their fellow Muslim first. Right? Now what if I told you, brothers, listen to me, brother, according to the Sharia, you get a bigger reward for giving the greetings first. He told that to a Sahaba. And guess what they did? When each one of them saw each other, after the Prophet said this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what they did? What do you think they did? Huh? They what? Yeah, of course, you would think that, right? They would say, they see him, Assalamu Alaikum, I said it first. Assalamu Alaikum, I did it first. Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, right? You would think they would do it first, right? But no, they did the opposite. Each one of them wanted their brother to get a bigger reward, so when they saw each other, they waited for the other one to get the greeting first. That's how deep the, the Iman was, subhanAllah. But in Islam for us, to give the greetings first is a bigger reward, but yet to return the greetings is farad. SubhanAllah, I started thinking about that. And wow, it hit me. I read this ayat, subhanAllah, and all of a sudden, the Prophet's word had tremendous meaning. Afshu salam baynakum. Spread salam among you. I remember I was in, I think, Coney Island, and I went to a supermarket or a grocery store to buy some goods. And when I was in it, it looked like the owners were like Muslims. You know, sometimes you go in a store and you say, I think, I think they're Muslims. And I put my, um, my stuff on the, on, the, on the shelf, and he was putting them in the bag. And I said, um, Assalamu alaikum. He says, Wa alaikum salam. He says, You Muslim? I said, Yes. And Akhi, this brother started speaking to me, talking to me. He was smiling. And he said, No, brother, you don't have to pay. I said, I'm going to do this every day. Well, I'm gonna we go to all the stores. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muslim. But you know what? The, the, the point of it, I didn't know him. He didn't know me. What started it? Assalamu alaikum. That's all it was. Assalamu alaikum. Subhanallah. You'd be surprised. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said to give salams to whom you know and whom you don't know. Afshu salam abaynakum. Spread salams among you because when you spread the salam, something happens. Now, I'm going to ask you a personal question. I'm, I'm going to get in your business. I'm going to get into your business. Jad, I'm going to get right into your business now. I'll ask a question and be honest now. Daoud, you too. First of all, how many brothers are married? Raise your hand. All right. Ready? I'm getting your business. How many of you, now I know, but by the way, by the way, I know, um, there's probably one or two brothers here not going to raise their hand. But the rest of us, we're going to raise our hand. How many of you have ever had an argument with your wife? Raise your hand. Now, that camera should get everybody, brother. <laughs> now, you know something? You're going to argue with your wife. Sheikh Yusuf is going to get married, inshallah, in August. August, Sheikh? We want everybody, we want the whole world to know about it. 
You gonna have a walima? Big walima, inshallah. Yes, big wa yes, big walima, yes. When you can make it big, we wanna we wanna beat the drums and Sheikh Yusuf getting married. And Sheikh Yusuf, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. We make dua that Allah bless you with a, with a tremendous marriage. And everybody goes into marriage with great anticipation. And you're going to be married and you're going to be happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you smiling just the way you're smiling now. Next year, I want to see the same smile on your face. And you know something? But every once in a while, even the best of our relationships, we're going to have arguments. Yeah. And Dawood, I don't care how great you are, brother. At some point, at some point, your wife is going to have an attitude with you. And you're going to have one with her. That's just the way it is. Can I prove it to you? Is any of us better than Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Any of us better than Aisha, radiallahu anha? Uh-uh. That's a messenger of Allah and Umm al-Mu'mineen, mother of the faithful. Yeah, Aisha. And the Prophet Muhammad Aisha radiallahu said to Aisha, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Aisha, Yeah Aisha, I know when you're pleased with me and I know when you're not pleased with me. See, when you're pleased with me, you say, Yes, by the God of Muhammad. But when you're displeased with me, you say, No, by the God of Ibrahim. It's the messenger of Allah. Yeah. Do you know that according to history, there were at least two times publicly where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was considering divorcing his wives. Yes. Right there in Quran. And even the Sahaba even uh, uh, gave him nasiha, gave him advice regarding his wives. So even there was some contemplation even of divorce, even Surah to Tahrim, the 66th Surah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad and if you put them off, if you divorce your wives, Allah will give you better. So even there's some discussion and Allah makes it public for us to learn lessons from it. So you're going to argue at points. Now watch this. You see, here's, here, bro, here's, here, um, here's where brothers that our Islam comes to, to play on everything that we do. See, because the key to our success is to فَرُدُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَيَوْمَ آخِرِ To refer everything back to Allah and the Messenger. If you're a true believer in Allah and the Messenger, no matter what happens, you got to go back to what Allah says. you got to come to the obedience of Allah and the obedience of His Messenger. You have to come back to it. Did it ever happen to you that you had an argument with your wife and, and right in the heat of the moment, one will say to the other, Assalamu alaikum. I've seen it happen. And they don't return the salam. I said, I said, Assalamu alaikum. You ain't gonna return the salams. I said, Assalamu alaikum. Now, don't raise your hand, but it's happened, hasn't it? Now, now wait, wait a minute. I know it hasn't happened to any of you. I know that. You're the most uh, beautiful Muslims, and even in the heat of anger, and your wife said, Assalamu alaikum. He said, Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, I know. You, you, that's exactly what you do. Right. But you ever notice that whenever there's a conflict between Muslims, so often one doesn't return salams. Why? Because there's something magical about salams. Afshu salama bainakum. Return the salams among you. Spread the salams. Give salams. And you know why it's heavy? You know why it's deep? Because we haven't got a clue what assalamu alaikum means. Yes. Bottom line. Bottom line. There's something powerful about returning the greeting. فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَرُودُهَا A better greeting, or at least return the greeting. And let me show you in my conclusion. Subhanallah. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مَنَا شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لَا تَسْتَوِي 
الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم سبحان الله سبحان الله ادفع بالتي أحسن لا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة good and evil are not the same I don't care what anybody does to you. Idfa billatihi asan. Idfa. Repel them with something better. What would happen? Faidha alladhi baynaka wa baynahu adawatun adawatun ka'annahu waliyun hameem. And respond with something better. And it would be as if you two were the best of friends. The key is how you respond. How you respond? How you respond? And the key is respond better. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, our messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's no doubt about it. He was the messenger of Allah. No doubt. Rasulullah. He's the messenger of Allah. No doubt about it. Listen to this, Akhi. How you tell me, man? A Jew come to you and say, "Assalamu alaikum, death be upon you." Assalamu alaikum, death be upon you. You hear it and say, "Wa alaikum." The human response is that when somebody does something to you that's evil and something wrong, you want to say the same thing. You want to do the same thing back to them. Whatever they did to you, whatever they said about you, you want now to do the same thing. And so a man and his wife is arguing now, and then everybody want to get the best of each other, and then everybody try to outdo each other in saying something bad about each other. وَجَعُنَّا بَعْدَكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ فِتْنَةٍ Atasbirun. Allah says in Quran, and we have made some of you as a trial for others. Will you be patient? My message today, brothers and sisters, is simple. I want you to go back to your wife today, and sisters, go back to your husband and repair that relationship with you, with them. Right now, some of you are on the brink of divorce. Some of you will be your first divorce. Some you've been married and divorced twice and three times and four times. I don't know your business. But too many of us have been married too many times. And too often we're ready to throw out the relationship. It doesn't appear to work. And I can't believe people get married for less than a month and ready to throw in the towel. But it happens too often. I want you to go back tonight, brothers and sisters, to begin to repair the relationship. And can I tell you the key? Inshallah, one of the keys is to be patient with each other. I have never found in my life, ever, a person with no defects. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in my lifetime. That means from the imams on down, we got defects. Brother, that sister that you're going to marry tomorrow, the next week, I don't care what she looks like now, but when you marry her, you're going to see something that you never saw before. Because you know what? It's easy to have relationships from a distance. That's easy. That sister appears to be so nice. Oh, she's so submissive until you get married. And by the way, sisters, I'm not talking about the sisters in Philly. You're, you're straight. All the sisters in Philly are straight, so I'm not talking about you all. But brother, because you're going to find something in her that you don't like, and this is why the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let no Muslim man hate his Muslim wife because if he's displeased with one characteristic of hers, if he hates one characteristic, he'll be pleased with another. Because when you marry that woman, she's a package deal. And with that package comes the good and the bad, the beauty and the ugly. And so it is with the brothers. It's a package deal. And so one of the great things, the great keys, is to be patient with those things that you don't like. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua for your wife, make dua for your husband, and then try to help each other. Don't put each other down. In terms of relationships between the masjids, 
Our masjid, Masjid al-Taqwa, alhamdulillah, we've been in existence since 1981. We started with a handful of brothers and sisters. We used to have Juma prayer service on Hancock Street in one of the apartments of one of our brothers named Brother Salim Abdul Sabor and his wife. We used to um, meet at Juma prayer and used to go in his living room and push the furniture in his bedroom and have Juma prayer right there. That was in July. In fact, it'll be our anniversary, according to the Gregorian calendar, around July 4th, 1981. I'll never forget that. The first day of Ramadan, we had decided that we we're going to be stronger in our worship of Allah and His Messenger. On that day, it was a day of independence for us, really. And we met Juma prayer the next week in Brother Salim's house. Allah blessed us over the years. We found a piece of property in Brooklyn, a drug-infested area. We went to auction, and we bought this building. We bid on it. I remember this handful of believers, about 25 of us, we sat in my apartment the night before the, the auction. This was the city, uh, building was owned by the city. And we had agreed that we wanted to buy this building for our masjid. And it had a minimum upset value of $30,000, meaning that you have to bid at least $30,000. We had admitted, we had said that that night that we would bid up to $90,000, that that would be our limit. We couldn't go beyond that. We got there to the place, to the auction. They were bidding on other property. Property was going from $500,000, $700,000, $800,000, million dollars. And subhanAllah, I huddled with the believers who were there and I said, listen, we better go up on what we said that we were going to bid. And we said that we would go up to something like $150,000. So at least, you know, we have some hope that we can get this place. I mean, we wanted that place for a masjid. Every property that was bid, there was some tremendous bidding going on, especially there were a lot of Koreans there, and they were buying up property in Brooklyn. They came to this property where Masjid al-Taqwa is. And the auctioneer said, and, and Allah is my witness, and I sat there, and I was making dua, and, and, and it's going to sound like a fairy tale. He said, minimum upset $30,000. Do I hear $30,000? I said, upset $30,000. He said, $30,000 going once, going twice, sold $30,000. Wallahi Azim. Wallahi Akhi. Wallahi. Wallahi. $30,000. The only property there that you got for the upset value. And when it was over, an African American when it was over, an African American man came to me, looked me in the eye and said, you know what? I wanted that property. But when I found out that the Muslims were bidding on it, I didn't want to bid against the Muslims. So this place, drug infested, Muslims get it for $30,000, we begin to clean up the area, drive out the drug dealers, people begin to come offer $500,000, $600,000 for our property. They want to buy it. We decided that we're going to renovate it. Alhamdulillah, we hired an architect. We're going to tear down our masjid and build it up again. Four stories. Our architect started working on some designs, and he told us, by the time this structure is finished, when it's all over, you will be able to have Yom Jumu'ah. Are you ready for the numbers I'm about to give you? I challenge the people of Philadelphia. You'll be able to have 7,000 people. And we intend, inshallah, to have 7,000 worshipers for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yom Juma. We grew from 25 people to 700, 800 people, Juma. It grew. And over the years, I've seen all over Muslims fighting Muslims. I see Muslims leaving one masjid and go to another masjid. Imam Suraj, I want to come to your masjid. Because, no brother, don't, don't, don't tell me. Because you bet, no, 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 no. Don't tell me that. I don't go recruiting other masters. I don't say, brother, you know, you come to Master Takwa. I don't go to Germantown Master and say, listen, brothers and sisters, um, or you want to 
come to a nice masjid, come to Brooklyn. We have this great masjid, Masjid Taqwa. I don't believe in doing that. And Allah knows people over the years who've come from different masjids, I always try to tell them to work out with your imam, to work out the problems between your imams. Because you know what I found out? Everywhere you go, there are going to be problems. There's no such thing as a masjid. There was no problems. No such thing. Why? Because I've made some of you as a trial for others. Will you be patient? My message today, brothers and sisters, is this. Our masjid, that's masjid of Taqwa, been in existence for these, um, since 1985, uh, 81 rather. Uh, so I imagine that's like, what, six, seven, 17 years? 15, 16, something like that. Years. I don't think that our masjid is the best masjid in the world. I don't. Contrary to what people may try to tell you. No. Nor do I think that the Imam, Imam Siraj, is the best Imam. No. Not by a long shot. I have my, um, my blemishes. I've never seen any Imam that's perfect. And so therefore, we have to be patient with one another. When you go around and travel throughout Philadelphia and throughout um, uh, um, um, New Jersey and in New York, you're going to find in every masjid something not 100%. Every community, every imam. Rather than tear each other down, why not build each other up? الْمُؤْمِنُ قَوِيُّ خَيْنٌ وَحَبَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ الْدَعِيفِ وَفِي خُلِي خَيْرٌ A strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than a weak believer. But there's good in all of them. If you say Imam Siraj and the members of Masjid al-Taqwa are weak, okay, I accept that. Why not you help me become stronger? Give me that which I need to make me stronger. Don't go behind my back and behind the back of the believers at this masjid or that masjid and begin to tear them down. Why not? Help to build them up. If you better, if you got better aqidah than me, I agree. If you understand the deen better than me, I agree. If you have more ilm than me, I agree. Help me to get it. And you know how you have to help me to get, get it? You have to use this word called hikmah. And you have to be patient. In my conclusion, how to help to build the bridges. I was in a city called Saskatoon, Canada. And subhanAllah, when a brother drove me from the airport, he said, look Imam Suraj, look at that bridge over there. And look at that bridge there. And look at that bridge over there. And look at that bridge there. That city of Saskatoon is called the city of bridges. Everywhere you look, you see bridges. And on that day, coming from the airport in that city, I said that I want to be a brother to help to build bridges. That's why I want to I be. I would like to bring husband and wife together, bring imams together. So wherever I go, Allah is my witness last week, Monday, I flew to Washington, D.C., my own expenses. I'm not on a fly. I, I took Amtrak to Washington, D.C. for one purpose and one purpose only. Somebody knew Imam Siraj and had a marital problem. Imam Siraj, my in-laws respect you. I respect you. Please, Imam, can you come to Washington, D.C. to try to mend this fence and bring us together? I went there. They had a, um, a thunderstorm that day. In the midst of us counseling them, all the lights went out. And it was so late that I decided to fly back to New York City that night on the late flight, the last flight. I went to, it drove me to National Airport. All of the airlines closed down. So at midnight, I had to take a train to back to New York City. The brother said, Imam Saraz, I'm going to pay for your travels. I said, no, brother. Don't you pay me. I came 
because I wanted to see this young couple stay together. I love to see that, brothers and sisters. I love to see us reconcile. If we're going to reconcile, if the ayah of the Quran is truthful, and it is, you were enemies, and Allah brought your hearts together. Let's prove it. But let's start in to mend these fences. I have an assignment for everyone. I want you to think about right now a Muslim that you have some difficulty with. Be it your wife or brother in another masjid. And I want you to go to that brother today or that sister tonight and do something to try to bring the relationship together. Brother Akil, he mentioned this hadith about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holding up the two people until they reconcile with each other. That everybody admits to paradise until these two people reconcile with each other. Sahih hadith. Let's do that. I close with this. Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimin min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is one whose other Muslims are saved by their hands and their tongue. You know what I learned? I can't look you in the face, Akhil, and say, Assalamu alaikum, and then turn around and backbite you. It doesn't work. If you understand the meaning of Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya habibi. Man, Muslims jive. You say all of that, all those high sounding words, all those beautiful salams, but you didn't mean the salam? What the salam is a lie? If you say assalamu alaikum, then mean assalamu alaikum. Mean it. That's the key. Return one better, or at least the same. That's my message today, brothers and sisters. Try it. Swallow your pride. Go to your wife tonight, or go to your husband tonight, and try to make the relationship good. And you know what happens when the relationship is good? We mutually benefit each other. And that's the beauty. I love this brotherhood. And Allah is my witness. There's nothing on this earth better than the brotherhood of Islam. We always say, believers are brothers. But how often we don't say what comes after it. So make peace between your brothers. We're not supposed to lie. No. Don't lie. Lying is bad. I don't care what it is. Don't lie. If your landlord comes to you and says you owe two months rent, don't lie. Say, yes, I owe you two months rent. I'm not going to run. I'm not hiding. I owe you two months. And I can't pay you. I'm not going to pay you tomorrow. Check is not in the mail. I intend to have some money three months from now. I'll give you all your money, bi'ithnillah, inshallah. And I ain't running, I ain't hiding. I'm not afraid of nobody. I'll stand up to my responsibility. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I owe you the money, and I'm not running. And I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to lie for nobody. I owe you the money and I'll give it to you the best way I can. If I have to pay you one dollar a week, I'm going to pay you one dollar a week. But damn if I'm going to lie to you. But the prophet said, it is not a lie when you reconcile two Muslim brothers with each other. You know, brother, that brother you had a fight with last week? You know what he told me? He said, man... You're really a special brother. He said that about me? Yeah. You're a special brother. Wow. He said that about me? Yeah, you're a special brother. And you reconcile the hearts. We do just the opposite. We backbite each other. We slander each other. And we cause enmity with each other. And by the way, I close. I'm sorry, I know I said uh, in my conclusion, my wife going to get me. But it's the last thing. It's the last thing. I just, I just had a point. What did I just say? Huh? My wife couldn't get me, no. Before that one. She, she got me intimidated. Hmm? 
subhanallah. I lost it. Anyway, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and have mercy on us and reconcile our hearts together. And he joined your hearts together. Not if you spent all the money on the earth, could you have done it? But Allah has done it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Bless this masjid, Masjid Aqsa, and bless the Imam and the board of directors for permitting us to come here tonight. And I make dua for all of the Imams. Yes, all of the Imams. In all of, the, all of the masjids, in the metropolitan area, in Philadelphia, in New Jersey, in New York, in all of this metropolitan area, ask Allah to make dua for every imam. Every imam. Allah bless those imams who have studied abroad and bless those imams with experience. Bless them to reconcile their hearts together for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah have mercy upon us and forgive us our sins. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ and whoever doesn't show mercy, Allah will not give them mercy. Let us be merciful toward each other. Let us use, be patient. And let us use hikmah to bring about the reconciliation, building the bridges, and mending the fences. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.